Select Board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the Select Board's office via Zoom, and ask if there's anyone present who is also recording this meeting. No one else is recording this meeting. Let the minutes reflect that no one else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. Or if someone is recording, please identify yourself for the minutes. All right, public comment. See any hands? There are no space for public comments. All right, consent agenda. Warrants. AP 2234, AP 2234, I'm sorry, AP 2234S, AP 2323S, AP 2323, minutes from February 17th, 2021, March 17th, 2021, August 18th, 2021, September 1st, 2021, October 27th, 2021, November 3rd, 2021. The Ambulance Contract Extension, extension with Action Ambulance. The appointment of Megan Raylan, who is here, and a common victualler's license for Latinos Cuisine, contingent upon the issuing of food permit. Would you like to say anything, Megan? Sure. Hello. Good evening. Um, this is very bright light. Um, my name is Megan Rellin. I'm a new Hadley resident. My family and I moved here in mid-June of this year, coming from Deerfield. And I have applied to be a part of the Hadley Diversity, Equity, and, and Inclusion group um, and continue my interest in supporting communities to be as inclusive and equitable as possible. Um, I'm a clinical social worker. I'm also going to be teaching at UMass uh, this winter. And so it's part of my belief in um, trying to serve communities that I'm a part of and to support, um, uh, support vulnerable populations and to be part of groups of folks that want to um, continue to make communities better places to live for all people and all families. And as a newcomer to Hadley, right now I'm just wanting to learn more about this great community. So thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you and thank you for your volunteer. All right, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Oh wait, we have, we have remote. All right. Uh, roll, roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Nevinston? Yes. Iser? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Old business. License renewals. Jennifer? Yes. Um, so this is the last batch of the year uh, for renewals. All of the licenses are... Um, Correct. All of these are paid, and I would ask you to approve them. We do have eight outstanding that I will um, assist in getting their permits in for the new year. And um, if I fail in my assisting, I will ask y'all to assist on the January 4th meeting. Um, but so far, so good, and I'm feeling really great about only eight outstanding. So, well done. <laughs> I thought I was going to get them all, but some people are a little tricky coming in. So if I could ask for y'all to approve them, I would appreciate it. Okay. We'll go tap by tap again. Please. Okay. Motion to approve the uh, alcohol licenses as presented. Second. Second. Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Iser? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Motion to approve the common Vic. Well, Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> Motion to approve the common VIC licenses as presented. Second. May I? Yes. Just, I would like to recognize that you are issuing a license for Latino cuisine that you just voted on for said license. So it's a tandem, just right. so that you're aware of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we have a second. So roll call vote. 
Keegan? Yes. Dennison? Yes. Iser? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Motion to approve theater skating rink license as presented. Second. Roll call, please. Roll call Keegan? Yes. Dennison? Yes. Iser? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Motion to approve class one and class two licenses as presented. Uh, well, yeah. I can I can second this. I'm not involved in any of these, so I'll second it. And roll call for Keegan. Yes. Evanston. Yes. Iser. Yes. Uh, Parsons. Yes. yes. Motion to approve entertainment licenses as presented. Second. Roll call for Keegan. Yes. Evanston. Yes. Iser. Yes. Parsons. Yes. yes. Thank you. And may I bring up one more thing about the licenses? Um, so I've received quite a few phone calls um, from some of our smaller businesses about the plastic bag bylaw that's being put in place on January 1st. I've encouraged them all to go to the Board of Health for the deferment. Um, and as I understand, there's going to be a public hearing on the 9th. Um, and so I'm going to try to get with Amy, or excuse me, not Amy, Emma Dragon, to get that to my licensees. Um, but there are several we're, we're a very welcoming community we have a lot of people here small businesses and not everyone who owns a business in the town first language is english and they are struggling a lot with this and i just i'm really concerned about how we're going to support them and make sure that things are clear and um easy for everyone to understand um and that's just one of the concerns that I've had with people calling me, but then I have other businesses that are just terrified about this because of Route 9. Um, and the fact that their business is suffering so much because of the construction already. And I just, I, I do want to make y'all aware of that, that the phone has rang pretty consistently. No one, however, wants to leave their name or number because they are worried that they'll be considered a trouble business. Mm -hmm. And I assured them that they wouldn't, y'all would never feel that way about any of our businesses and that you're always here to hear them. But that is, that is what I'm getting. No one wants to go on the record with complaining, but they're happy to call and talk to me about okay. it. Okay, sure. And I've Thank heard you. from people who have thousands of dollars worth of items that won't, won't uh, qualify for this and they don't want to throw it out again for the reasons you're talking about. So. And I, I think there's plenty of reason to allow some kind of leeway here. Well, and the Board of Health knows that, and that's why the bylaw was written, yeah. as it is. That yeah. If people have concerns about it, they should please talk to Board of Health. The town is very business friendly, and we are just in the long run working to have plastic reduction in our town. Thank you for allowing me to speak about that. Sure. You're welcome. All right. Econo Lodge. Laura. You want to come sit at a microphone, please? Good evening. Uh, my name is Laura Baker. I'm a real estate development director for Valley Community Development Corporation, and I'm joined tonight by Alexis. I don't Parker. think you're Vice on. Is your green light on? <laughs> I guess I should talk. I do have one. No. Sounds the same. Sounds the same. happening with the plan to uh, convert the Econo Lodge to housing. Um, we are moving toward acquisition of the property. We, at this time, anticipate taking title in the first week of January, so quite soon. Um, we had applied for what's called a project eligibility letter from the state. You may remember you um, provided a letter of support for that, and we anticipate getting that letter back from the state. Really, I was hoping by the end of the year, so, but very soon. 
Once we have that, our next action would be to uh, put in a zoning application uh, through the Zoning Board of Appeals. And so that will kind of be our next kind of venture into the public arena. Um, we've had a couple of inquiries um, from people knowing that we're going to acquire the hotel and that we will have a holding period until we're ready to renovate it and, and turn it into housing about short-term leases. And I just wanted to see if there were any concerns or questions about that if we decided to go down that road. Um, one of the inquiries is from someone who would like to do overflow uh, homeless shelter for three months. Um, I, I especially wanted to make sure to talk with you first because I know we've talked a lot about the difference between homeless shelter and permanent supportive housing. So I didn't want to muddy the waters and create confusion about what our plan was um, if we did end up in a short-term lease situation. So it's really just to kind of see what people think about that, if there's any concerns about that. I know we have the police chief here tonight um, and the highway super I see. Uh, I don't see the fire chief. Um, but you know, it, this is a use that had been um, accommodated at the Econa Lodge in the past uh, without incident. I, I've heard some other things about um, rentals that have taken place since then. So again, I just wanted to be really clear and transparent and make sure there was no confusion if we ended up with a short-term lease situation. Um, happy to take any questions that you have about the long-term plan uh, for permanent supportive housing or any of the other things I've talked about. Randy. Have you been to the planning board and talked to them about the short-term lease situation? Nope. You are the first ones that we've broached it with. And again, okay. we're not committed to do it, but I can see that you know, we don't really want to have a vacant hotel mm -hmm. um, and that there's a lot of need. So we put those two things together and we can kind of see the writing on the wall that we'll have, you know, we'll have inquiries about it. Sure. But no, we haven't. So haven't my concern would be one. the, it, it's, it sounds like it's something that's been used in the hotel situation before. So it's basically a hotel use, which is allowed. Yep. My only concern is that it's something that is not allowed and the fine lines, and I don't know what they are. Right. That's why I would like to see you talk to the planning board. When other um, hotels have been used for homeless shelters in this town, what process did they use to do that? I don't have, I wouldn't have that information. I can get it for you, but. I don't think, okay. I think they just did it, sort of. So Laura's being kind enough to come to us in advance, which we appreciate, always knowing what's going on. Um, but I do think that Randy's idea of talking to the planning board would be useful. When you say uh, short-term lease, Laura, what's the time frame that you're looking at? So it, the most critical months are the cold months. Yes. So um, there is interest in, uh, from January to March, um, having an overflow capacity so that if other shelters Sadly, this year, the shelters are, are full. Um, and so people are not having a place to sleep overnight. They're outside. Um, and so a place to direct people, if a shelter reached capacity, they could send folks so they wouldn't be outside. Um, we would make sure as landlords that it was a fully staffed 24-7 situation for a use like that. And it probably wouldn't, it wouldn't be the whole hotel. It would be a portion of it, which is how it was used in the past. It was just the first floor. I see Bill Dwyer ready to speak. Hi, Bill. Hello. Um, I do want to uh, just suggest here. I should be audible. Okay, I am unmuted. Bill still can't hear you. Still can't. Try somebody. Everybody looks frozen. You can get somebody else to talk and see if they're, if Eddie, it works. can you speak? They're all frozen. They're not frozen. Yeah, we're having issues with streaming tonight. Hold on a minute, folks. Yeah, it just... Okay. 
All right, Bill. I, I have no issues with this uh, individually or as a planning board <clears throat> member, except to say it hasn't come to us. So you guys, oh, can you hear him? Okay. <laughs> um, what we did discover in the past, and perhaps uh, the building inspector wants to uh, uh, weigh in on it, is when uh, uses are changed, sometimes they change building code requirements and fire code requirements. So uh, it would be important, as important to get the buy-in from the building department and the fire department as it would be from the select board. Um, the planning board, obviously, I, I can't speak on behalf of the planning board. What changes it, the difference between a short-term lease situation and long-term residential use is one is short-term um, and one is residential. Um, we know it's not zoned for residential use. Um, we would absolutely, if this came to pass, check in with Tom Quinlan, uh, the building inspector, the fire chief, and likely um, the police chief as well. But again, we didn't want to start talking to anyone uh, without just making sure we weren't heading you know, we, we don't want anybody to think we're doing kind of a bait and switch. We said it wouldn't be a homeless shelter, now suddenly it is. So we just wanna be mindful of that and make sure we're clear um, what's happening and see if you had any questions or concerns. I see Dee Dee on. Are you gonna speak, Dee Dee? Um, um, but as Bill said, said um, you, know, you know, there are concerns as far as fire also too, because it is a little um, different and they do sometimes get more calls, things like that, the same with the police. Um, so I think kind of that is a little more of our concerns than anything else. It's more of a safety issue. Okay, well, I don't wanna take up more of your time then. Anyone else have any questions for Laura? Great. Thank you for the update. Thank you very much. Happy holidays, happy new year. Thank you, you too. All right. We have an abatement request for Algonquin Drive. Scott, would you like to speak to this? Yes, I would like to recommend that uh, the board grant this abatement. Audience, um, Scott, I'm just looking at, well, I'm actually the, um, letter that Jennifer, uh, Jennifer put in here, and she's indicating that it's a very unusual situation um, and it has to do with the swapping out of the meter, correct? And that's why you're recommending that we go ahead and approve this? Yes, um, currently at this time, we cannot uh, prove uh, the accuracy of the meter. Uh, it, uh, we don't have it, it was uh, we have part of the meter, not the whole thing. Part of it was just uh, uh, misplaced and, and uh, I think removed from the building. So uh, we cannot test it, the meter. And that, that is our problem. We cannot uh, prove the accuracy. Time, the answer is no. So I thought we should, would want to explain to people why this was a unique circumstance. Yes, yes, Molly, that, that is correct. Most of the time the answer is no, but in this situation, uh, we, we just can't prove anything at this point. Got pulled. That we postponed because of the holiday and that he, well, actually I don't want to say, and for other reasons that he did not want to attend this evening, he asked to be postponed until January 18th. Okay. So, I talked with that person and it's, it's relative to all abatement requests and this is a question for Scott. The gentleman who had the other abatement request wondered if our system would allow if you noticed excess usage in a given time period, is it possible to notify the property owner or is that something that just not possible with the with the technology we have relative to the water meters. Randy, with, with our current technology we have, 
we only would know that information at the time of read. And at the time of read, it gets flagged as a, a high usage and the uh, collector's office actually uh, reaches out to the uh, residents to tell them that they have a high read. Uh, but in, in between the reads, there is no way for us to uh, know that. Yep. Do you have your recommendation on this abatement? Second. Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Nevison? Yes. Pfizer? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, John O'Leary, the senior planner from the PBPC, has requested, uh, is going to talk to us about the ADA block grant funding for the town. Hey, good evening. How are you guys? Good. Um, so I apologize. My camera isn't working right now, so I'll just speak uh, this way. Hopefully it's good enough. Um, so like, as you mentioned, um, I'm John O'Leary. I am a senior planner at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, and basically I reached out to Carolyn Brennan, uh, inquiring about um, who she thought might be a good fit for um, a project committee that's looking to um, to administer um, an ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. So a quick background on this. Um, this project was actually funded through the town's FY21 CDBG grant uh, program. So the town received um, $37,400 to um, hire a consultant to perform um, an ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. And uh, just really briefly, the, the plan is essentially going to evaluate um, all of its municipal uh, owned buildings and properties. So the plan will provide an evaluation um, of the town's operations to determine whether or not they are accessible to people with disabilities. Uh, and the plan will also identify physical barriers to any public building sites and services um, owned or operated by the town. So I'm, as the project manager, looking to put together a few members of the community um, that would like to be part of, or would be a good fit for this committee before um, I get underway to procure the consultant. Um, and so that's what I just was here tonight to see uh, the select board maybe had so many uh, recommendations or people in town that you thought would be a good fit for this committee. Haley Wood, who is on the meeting because she's the director of the senior center and she has done some of this work. Haley? Hello. Hi, John. Hi, everyone. Um, so, yeah, I'm Haley Wood from um, the director of the senior center, and um, I feel very supportive of the undertaking of the self evaluation and transition plan. It's very much in keeping with the goals of the um, age age friendly and dementia friendly Hadley initiative that is well underway. And we have had an active working group working on that for um, close to a year and a half now. And um, John, your colleague, Becky Bash um, was the senior planner who assisted us with that. Um, so first of all, I, I just wanna voice my support for the process and um, we'll be curious to, to learn more about the, the various steps involved. And I am, We'll be glad to bring it to our working group, which is comprised of um, older adult residents in Hadley, um, staff um, who work at the senior center, and different business owners in town who have taken an interest in the work and um, recommend, um, well, just simply ask them if they might be available to participate in the committee. And I'm curious about the time commitment and you know, kind of overall meeting schedule plan and the steps that would happen um, to implement the plan. Yeah, I think you dropped out. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Surely not intentionally. Going back in if you want to give him a moment. Chairperson, this is Mark Dunn. I have, uh, as an architect, I have done these for other towns. I remember doing for the town Swampscott in the North Shore. Um, 
if I can get my partner's approval, I would put my hat in the ring. Mark. Um, why don't we go on with the next item in case John comes back? Okay, I'll keep an eye out for him. All right. Mike, you want to come take the microphone, please? Acting Sergeant Appointment. So, thank you for uh, giving me a few moments of your time. Um, the board has heard, you know, some of what the department is going through right now as far as uh, personnel issues go, but I know that the board also uh, likes transparency and you want the public to understand why you're making the moves that you're making. So, I'm going to be asking you for a couple of things uh, in a few moments, but I think you know, the general public may be interested to hear why, sorry, uh, you know, why you're making whatever decision you make. So, as many of you know, Mike Romano uh, is going to be out uh, because he is ill. He will be out for uh, a year or more. Uh, and that's if everything goes, you know, well. He is home now. He is, uh, you know, has good days and bad days, but he's you know, at least not stuck in the hospital. Uh, we just recently got another officer back after being out with his own medical issue for about a month and a half or two months. Uh, sick time, uh, sick bank for him. Uh, the same sick bank that I'll be asking you to switch over to Mike Romano tonight. Uh, I had another officer who's been out since the weekend with what he thinks is possibly a broken foot or at least an injured foot to the point where he obviously hasn't been able to be at work. Um, I have two officers right now who have COVID and uh, I have a detective who is investigating three major crimes right now. Who's pulling double duty as a patrol officer because we just don't have enough patrol officers to patrol the town. And as I just mentioned to uh, Carolyn a few minutes ago, uh, I am waiting to hear back from the Municipal Police Training Commission because one of the wonderful new changes with the MPTC and POST is um, waivers and exemptions. And I found out that I may end up actually having to change the title of two of my full-time police officers to part-time police officer reduce their hours, thus pulling two more officers out of our full-time ranks for a period of time, just so they can complete the new Bridge Academy, and then put them right back into full-time after they've completed that. Do um, you have the governor's phone number? <laughs> I, wish I, do, I wish I did. <clears throat> uh, so I say all of that to say this board has been very good to our department. This town has been very good to our department. I'm not going to come here and ask for some outrageous request to hire 10 police officers. What I am asking, though, is that uh, we can't continue to operate under these circumstances. Everything except for the situation with Sergeant Romano, we will deal with. Um, it's part and parcel with having a police department with, in this new day and age with the new MPTC rules and the post commission and all of the different regulations that we're still trying to learn. But what I am going to be requesting is that uh, I would like to uh, promote an acting sergeant to backfill the vacancy left by Mike in the supervisory role. And I'm, act I'm also going to be asking the board to allow me to hire uh, a full-time police officer to backfill the vacancy that Mike is going to leave for who knows how long he'll be out. Um, I can tell you that within my budget, I will be able to cover the sergeant promotion. The difference between the patrol officer that I'm recommending and, and the sergeant's salary is something that I can handle. Um, obviously, you know, we're going to have some we're going to get dinged in a couple of areas, but we're, we'll be able to handle it. You know, with all of these other officers being out and back and forth and everything, you know, it's going to hit some of the overtime lines and things like that. I don't, however, can't tell you that I will have enough money within my budget to cover an entire another salary. I will tell you that I can make reductions in some of my expense lines and we can do transfers at the end of the budget cycle, but as 
molly is probably the only board member that probably that was a member of the board at the time when i was hired um, you know she can probably recall that sometimes in order to save money in some areas and be able to predict and you know appropriately predict a budget uh, you have to spend money in other areas and that's one of the ways that we were able to resolve the overtime problem that you know plagued this department for decades uh, so those are my two requests for this evening uh, I'd like to obviously switch the sick time bank over to Mike Romano which I think all you have to do is sign I don't, I, I don't know if you have to actually vote on that now or, or not but um, I'm requesting that those two that I be allowed to make those two moves <coughs> immediately any questions no I mean and again um, we understand what you're up against you even more better news tonight so yeah. um, from the last time we spoke <laughs> so um, I'm sure you have the f my full support and I, I think it um, so with that said um, so I'll make a motion so if anybody wants to say anything further uh, motion to I'd be requesting three pieces so so the three pieces would be to switch the sick time bank over to from um, from James Ryan to Mike Romano mm -hmm. the second piece would be to promote to acting sergeant Jacob Marini mm -hmm. effective January 8th 2023 and the third piece would be to allow me to open a hiring process to backfill that vacancy that Mike left. So, so moved on those three points. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Roll call vote Keegan? Yes. Devin Smith? Yes. Iser? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. yes. Thank you. And just one item of good news from the police department. Um, big shout out to our canine officer Fitz and his yep. handler. So the handler is Jake. Oh, perfect. The guy you just promoted to yeah. acting sergeant. So yeah, uh, yeah, he did a great job today. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know if anybody saw that no. or not, but um, no. If you want to share with he us? Was inadvertently called in to Yeah, work. so he yeah. was uh, he was doing his um, in, his uh, weekly training that he has to do with the dog. Uh, and he's with a, a bunch of troopers over in Northampton. Holyoke police had a pursuit. Um, when the pursuit ended, the occupants of the vehicle took off running and the Holyoke officers located uh, a firearm in the vehicle. Fitz and Jake happened to be the closest canine unit, so they called for a canine. He went down to Holyoke. He was able to track the, uh, where the individuals ran and didn't actually find the suspects at that point, but located four more firearms um, that were hidden in the woods. So they had a total, they found a total of six guns, got a total of six illegal firearms off the street, thanks to the, uh, the dog's nose. Nice. That's great. Good work. That's nice on the yes. job training. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it's worth paying the overtime today, at least. Yes. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's uh, and as far as the the stuff with the Econo Lodge goes, I'm happy to talk with her at any point. But I've spoken with her several different times. The Econo or the um, uh, the hotel situation with homeless, you know, folks living in there is a completely different animal for at least for us than something like the Knights Inn, right? It's more of a motel setting. People can come outside in the parking lot. That's when things get weird for us. When they're in rooms and it's a nice like hotel type setting, very different. And uh, call volume will go up, but it's not that it's not manageable for us. I can't speak for the fire chief. I don't know what he's going to say, but we will deal with it. Yeah. Thank, so. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Thank you. Welcome back, John. We just put everything on hold when you disappeared. I apologize about that. I don't know what happened. I just got kicked out. Is it possible? Okay. Are you there? I'm sorry. Yeah, can Is you it hear me? To put this on the he's, so that he's in charge of this. I'm not. Oh. I used to be. Here. John? Can keep an eye on John. Yes. John's back can, on. You, yeah. can you guys hear me? I can't hear him. Can you say something, John? Uh, yes, I'm. Can anyone else hear me? Not hearing no. you. So they yeah, can hear him. I at hear home. you. It's just. We yep, can't we can hear him, hear him at home. Uh, 
All right, Haley, he disappeared early in your talk. Will you start again, please? I don't think we can we hear can't her. hear Haley either. Yeah, I, I love repeating myself. Hold on. Sorry about that, Haley. That's okay, John. I just wanted to let Haley, you know that I would enjoy it. Should I continue? No. Okay. How much feedback do you get if I just unmute my computer? Don't do it. <laughs> I have a different suggestion. Why don't we give contact information to Haley and to John and have them talk? Yeah, and, and I'll be talking with John. Okay. And, but do you have any other suggestions of anybody else you would like on that? Um, well, Mark Dunn offered. Yep. Anybody else? Um, not immediately. Right. No, okay. the only thing I can think is if there's anybody, um, you know, maybe a resident of Golden Court or, you know, somebody who. Mm -hmm. um, anybody in town that's interested? That we, yeah. One thought I had, having been doing, have done these studies before, oftentimes the rec director is Parks and Rec because it's not just the buildings themselves, it's the town owned prop, you know, outdoors. Oh, that's a good and point. Making sure they're accessible. So, it might be worth having Greg sit Maybe on. Greg, yeah. Okay, if he's willing. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, John and Haley, we're going to give your information to each other, and you can contact outside of this meeting. And thank you both okay, for being great. here. Hey, if I turn the speakers on here, you. you guys okay with no video? Say that again. Sure. Okay. She's trying to get noise and no picture so that we can they can talk. That's okay. okay. That which really we're at the end of the meeting because number five five the Hadley Business Council formation has been postponed. Mm -hmm. So we have an administrator's report, mm -hmm. and that's it. Okay. So Amy, um, the I, I put a town administrator's update on board docs, but I also gave everyone here a hard copy because we're literally just looking at this today but it's it's kind of going to be a, a, a rolling document that I'll keep updated uh, but it, I, I know that sometimes you guys are asked what what projects are happening uh, what, what's the progress what are the challenges so I've highlighted in here um, a combination of projects that have been going on for a while such as the fiber update uh, I've gotten some really good up uh, just, just up to date on where uh, certain departments are, such as DPW. Uh, Chief Bank Dable has been o overseeing the fiber update, as well as uh, uh, water and sewer. This is not exhaustive, but it was you know close to four pages, so I thought I'd you know uh, continue to keep keep it updated. I did want to just highlight a couple things. Uh, the I did attend an electric vehicle webinar, which was very interesting. It does look like there's going to be funding coming down the road to help pay for charging stations and um, design, you know, where where they should be placed. But that that's down the road, and those those uh, funding options haven't been announced yet. But there was some good discussion about that. And that's and I, out in the community, not just for municipal use. It's going to be both. One of the things they focused on actually was uh, on the highway on how because you have to have them pretty close together so there's a real focus there there's a focus on municipalities and then there's how to uh, work with residents so it's kind of had a few parts to it so i'll keep you updated about that um, the classification uh, and compensation and succession plan uh, that rfq we only got one response so i am going to reach out one-on-one -on -one with a couple consultants to see what the challenges were some of it was timing we, we did hear from one but they just couldn't do it within the date that we had um, posted so we canceled that bid and i am going to um, do some share the scope of work and reach out personally with some of these um, and we're able to do that with this um, I, a nice thing that's happened is um, just a group of Western Mass town administrators are getting together every other month for lunch and just sharing ideas, challenges within their community, and, and uh, sharing their knowledge. So uh, that has been really nice. Um, the budget in the annual town meeting, just a reminder that it's May 4th. You guys will be opening the warrant at the next select board meeting. And we've already gotten uh, most of the budget requests back 
and we will be setting up uh, a schedule to meet with Linda and I will be meeting with, the, with all the department heads. Um, I did, uh, you heard Haley talk about the age and dementia friendly um, Hadley assessment and action plan I gave you. She did leave a copy for all of you because she is going to be talking about that at the uh, January 18th select board meeting and she thought it would be helpful for you guys to have that ahead of time. Uh, there's also a, you've got the hard copy, but it's also in board docs. Uh, the ambulance, an update with the ambulance, and again, I'm not trying to go over everything, but things that I think the community would like to know. Uh, the ambulance will be, um, is planning to be up and running by May, uh, but we did, uh, the EMS coordinator is preparing a training plan. There's state inspections, there's um, certain certifications that need to get done as well as just right now just getting it painted and with a lettering on it so we're looking forward to that um, let's see there's a, just a list of other grants and projects that are going on and i think i think that's all i'm going to go over right now um, but i certainly can that'll give you an opportunity to see it on paper and if anyone has any questions, most oh, one, most importantly, the Silver Jackets, Mass, Massachusetts Silver Jackets, what I've talked to you about, who was focused on um, education for flood risk, has uh, we finally I have we are meeting on January 9th with several stakeholders, MEMA, FEMA, a lot of um, th those entities, and so I, I've explained what the scope of work for that. I can go into more detail if you need more information on that, but it is. It's actually, um, I'm very excited about it. It's gonna focus on education and communication, which we really, really need. So that is just a reminder, the, um, the levy assessment that we've been doing with Rich Niles from Weston and Sampson, this will, uh, this is part of it, and it's just one more baby step to certification several years down the road with the dike and, and the levy, so. Thank you, any questions for Carolyn? No, we can just reach out directly if we. What'd you say? I said we could just reach out to you. Absolutely, directly. absolutely. I will be just. Uh, I, I'm not sure I mentioned it to, to the whole group, but I will be out of the office from tomorrow till next Wednesday. Grandchildren are home, but I can be reached, so not a problem. Yeah, no, I can wait. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> are there any select board items for future discussion? Uh, I have an interesting issue that has come up with. Uh, someone trying to sell a house on Birch Meadow Road and the road is it's probably 20 or 25 years old and it's never been accepted by the town and so this person selling their house the buyer's attorney finds out that it's not been accepted so there's uh, some pushback which I completely understand the reason I'm saying this is we need to figure out with us and probably the planning board how to deal with these types of situations uh, I mean this one is uh, very uh, extraordinary in that developer walked away from it but we have other streets in town where the developers are still around and houses are being built and the roads aren't accepted and technically the town's not supposed to do anything with plowing and maintenance until they're accepted but that's not what's happened and I get it I don't have a real issue with that people pay taxes they ought to be entitled to services but this this particular situation just brought up a real red flag on on stuff like that and it's not fair to the people that live on the street if something major comes up the town's not gonna take care of it and they're I'm sure everybody assumes that it's a town road and they don't have to worry about it so we should figure out how to rectify so, that yeah that's probably a legal issue about it. we can't just take it if the developer walked away and is technically the owner um, and uh, not. I don't well, know maybe the future Scott, are you still there um, so the what I would say agenda. since this is not on the agenda right. I'll get the right players okay. yeah and right. what so, would you like that in the very near future like January yes. 4th yes, or 18th yeah. yes please sure. Carolyn just so you know there's some history on this that maybe I can relate That'd be to great. You. Um, and we would definitely want at least one member of the planning board present in that discussion yes okay. Okay. The fourth or the 18th? Fourth. Fourth? Okay. Um, and I just wanted to bring up, so I think last time I mentioned, so there were four things that have come up at previous meetings. And I think some of them may be coming up soon, but I'm not <coughs> sure if others are. 
So if we could just go back and readdress um, one of the priorities we identified at, I think I made meeting in early June, was we wanted to talk about how to improve communications um, with the community in general. Uh, something that I think Amy, Amy and I both brought up as a, as a topic for discussion. Um, and we haven't really addressed that. Um, we also talked about reviewing the roles and responsibilities, um, specifically of the select board and the town administrator, just because it looked like there were places where there seemed to be some conflict in different manuals that are out there. So we wanted to make sure that we're clear on that. Um, the town administrator goals, and I think I think that might be in That's January, January, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then um, the performance review, we had talked about that, and then I think it was left with Jen, we were talking about a process, she was talking about the 360 degree, and I haven't heard anything about that since either, so. Yeah, we've been working on it, trying, working with other um, town administrators to get some examples back, okay. so she does have some examples. Is there a priority list on how you want those? You don't want to obviously do those all at one meeting but is there one that's well you're standing doing your out? goals on the fourth i'm doing it on the fourth so and that i think the fourth is pretty full we should go to the yeah. 18th and, and it would lead we'll into the evaluation on there and we'll have conversations about them and get them focused well i'm wondering if i can put um my goals and jen's and have the performance review and the SWOT analysis, I'm, I'm sorry, not the SWOT analysis, the 360. We, I, we, do, we definitely have a 360. I think the evaluation, um, I think we, we had gone back and forth with a couple documents, and I think we've settled on one that's very. Okay. Um, so, so you'll present the process at, at yeah. the same meeting with the goals? Yeah, I, I'm going to do some research on that because it, it, it's, it can, it's definitely a few meetings. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, good. But get it started. That's good. So I'm going to add the process of the 360 evaluation to the town to your goals and achievements I'll, I'll help with the agenda because the 360 is separate from the evaluation okay. so yeah uh, we'll, we'll word it we do magic when we're when we're doing those agenda items I know, but I'm sorry for publicly but she's supposed to be off tomorrow <laughs> that's why I was trying to get it all right here right now but, okay I will talk to you after all right sorry anything else nope. Amy anything from you we can't hear her yeah, yeah, yeah. okay yeah. thumbs up <laughs> oh hey i hear you <laughs> oh you can hear me okay good may i have a motion to adjourn so moved second <laughs> roll call excuse please. me Oops. i'm sorry i am um... <clears throat> I, I joined late. I just wondered if you addressed our um, appointee for the uh, Committee for Diversity. Yes, and she spoke quite well, and she's appointed. Oh, sorry. I came in late to support her, but oh well, better next time. Thank you very much. You can watch it on Hadley Media. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Nevinson? Yes. Iser? Yes. Parsons? Yes. 